Hey everybody, welcome back to A Better Computer. My name is Matt, and I am excited today to get to show off an app called Squash. Now, Squash is a Mac app for compressing images, so you can take your images and turn them into smaller files. That's the core feature of the app, but it does some more things as well, does some bulk processing. I'm gonna show you the full feature set today. I wanted to thank Real Mac Software for sponsoring this video. Uh, they are the developers behind the app Squash and some other Mac apps that are really great. Uh, this is a sponsored video, like I said, but I would not be talking about it. I certainly wouldn't be showing you my workflows <laughs> if I wasn't actually using the app, if I didn't actually think it was a good value. And I am gonna show you a lot of functionality that's available totally for free. Uh, so if you like the app, you can download it, take a look at some of the functionality for free. And if you wanna upgrade to the pro plan, there is a coupon code for 20% off the app that'll work through the end of 2021. So check that out in the description. Now let's jump into the demo. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and launch Squash. And so I'm, you're gonna see right here, we get a pop-up that says, hey, I'm gonna use the demo version. So I'm using the totally free version of the app. There's nothing special going on here. Uh, let me pull in some screenshots. So it does this cool little animation thing that kind of follows your mouse, but I drop in some photos. I can also drop in a single image, doesn't really matter. Uh, but I have these images, these six images I want to convert. And let me choose this one first. Uh, and you can kind of see, here's the before, here's the after. And so it starts as a five megabyte PNG file, and it's gonna compress down to 90%, uh, down to a 426 kilobyte file. So more than a 10 times savings in uh, file size, which is great. Uh, so I could do that. Um, I can do a before and after. So here's like what it looks like before. Here's the after. It looks the same. <laughs> if I look at a screenshot from an iPhone, I go from one and a half megs down to 300 kilobytes. Uh, and again, if I just kind of look at it, it's it's the same thing to me. Uh, so this is really, really nice. Um, just being able to compress images uh, to smaller sizes, especially screenshots, which are very large, especially when you take them on the Mac. Uh, you can compress them down into smaller things, which I find useful when posting to my blog. So I can just go ahead and export the images and I've got it actually set to export to the desktop. So it just exported right away was super quick. And uh, if I just by converting them to JPEGs, that's all I did again, using the free version of the app, they started as 16.4 megabytes and now they're down to 3.1 megabytes. So pretty darn good. Now there are some other things you can do in the free version of the app. I can resize these as well. So I can make the max size on either the X or Y axis 1920 or whatever I want it to be. Uh, there's some other things I can scale it by a percentage if I'd like. Uh, I can free size it. Um, I find max size is the one that I like, especially for posting to my blog. Uh, 1920 as the maximum height or width, whichever one is relevant, uh, tends to work really well. Uh, I can put some effects on it. We'll get into that in a second. Uh, these are paid effect packs. Um, so these aren't all gonna be available to everybody, but again, we'll jump into that in a second. Uh, I can change the metadata. GPS location, camera model, not really relevant for screenshots, so I'm not gonna do that. And I can retain dates, and I like to have this on so that I retain the date that the file was created so that the screenshot, even though I'm compressing it and creating a new image, it's gonna hold on to that date. Uh, the date modified, I do like it that to update though to when I squashed it. <laughs> so uh, that's all available, and again, this is all available in the free one, uh, free version of the app. I'm gonna export the images again. Uh, those are gonna to export to the desktop. And if I look at these again, uh, that's 1.5 megabytes, again, down from 16. So more than 90% of the size was cut out by compressing these down, so that's really great. Now, let me go ahead and add my pro license to the app, and I'll show you a little bit more of what we can do. Okay, so I've gone ahead and activated my pro license, and I'm gonna pull in some photos uh, that I took. So these are just general photos that I took with my camera, and you can see we're just compressing it to a slightly smaller JPEG, 4.8 megs down to four. Not a huge difference, but JPEG to JPEG, you're not gonna get that much of a uh, size quality or size reduction unless you're really degradating the quality of the output image. So you can get it pretty small, but it's gonna be lower quality. Um, let's leave it at 90. I tend to like 90 for JPEG, but let's look at some of the other things I can do. So now these adjustments make a lot more sense, right? I can reduce uh, the saturation by turning monochrome down, or I can go to 100% to make it fully black and white. Or I can blur the image a little bit if I'd like. Uh, that doesn't make sense for a picture of my dog, but you can blur an image if you'd like. Uh, I can sharpen it. I can bring up the vibrance, right, to like make the colors really pop. So there's some stuff you can do there. I really like the effects. So these are basically Instagram filters is a good way to think about it. <laughs> you can throw these on here. There's some here and then you can get more. So there's packs you can purchase for uh, premium. Uh, again, I'll put links to these in the description. Uh, but yeah, I kind of like this plain sailing one, which I think adds some color. 
Uh, I don't like it at 100% necessarily. Um, I think for my style, it's a little bit much. But if I drop it down to like 20%, uh, I think that makes it pop a little bit over the original photo, which tends to look pretty good in my opinion. But again, you can do it to your taste. So I'm going to leave that on. I am going to throw a watermark on here. So you can put a watermark on here so I can have it show kind of a better computer. Actually, I'm not going to be posting this to a better computer, so I'm going to do it on social. So I'll put my name. Uh, so let me go ahead and actually not have a typo in there. There we go. Uh, and let me use my... Uh, Bjorn, which is the font that I tend to prefer for my branded stuff. So I'll make it bold, I'll make it white, and there we go. And that's a little faded, so let me go into my settings and set the opacity. Let's set it to 100, so it's just uh, going to pop a little bit better there. I can make it a little bigger. Um, I can offset it a little less from the corner, and cool. There we go. So I can put a watermark on there. For some people, that'll be relevant. You can actually add multiples if you'd like. Uh, for metadata, this is where it's kind of nice to be able to remove my GPS location if I'm posting it to a social platform, uh, and I can leave the camera model if anyone wants to download the image and see what I took it on. Uh, so I kind of like to have that. Uh, we can rename them, uh, so I can add dash squashed to the end of it, uh, and it's going to apply to all of these, right? So this is, again, a bulk editing option, so it's going to apply to all of these. Um, let's see. Uh, so yeah, you can kind of see this will go from image 1777 to image 177 dash squashed. Um, or I can do a full on replace and I could do uh, this as photos and then the three hash marks means it will number them uh, to whatever number um, it is in the, in the export flow. So I'll leave that. Uh, retain dates, again, I like to have date created stay and date modified change and I'm just going to export to the desktop. So when I do this, I should get a pretty nice and simple export. And so it's exporting them here. There we go. And so it numbered them all incrementally. Uh, I'm not sure why the desktop is showing them in the wrong order, but yeah, they it numbered all of them for me so I can get this nice little set of them. Now, one of the things that's really nice is that maybe I'm gonna do this a lot. <laughs> I'm gonna do this often. Uh, so I can go over here and save these changes as a preset. So I'm gonna go ahead and add preset, and this is going to be, um, what do we wanna call this? Uh, we're gonna call it um, filter images, right? So filter images, there we go. So now I have blog screenshots and filter images as options. I'm gonna delete these from my desktop. Uh, I'm gonna quit out of squash, and then when we go back into it, uh, I pull in the photo. So these are again, the original unedited photos. Uh, I can do filter images, and it's going to apply all of these. And so Squash actually remembers everything you did last time. So for me right now, that's not super relevant. Uh, but if I turn all these off and just go back to the normal, and I do filter images, it's going to apply all of those changes automatically, and I can export the bulk. Um, I also have this blog screenshots one. So let me go ahead, and I'm going to take everything out of Squash right now. There we go. Pull in my screenshots. And I just want to upload these to my blog, right? So I'll hit blog screenshots. It's going to do the resizing. It's going to compress them into JPEGs, the uh, metadata thing. Uh, there we go. Export. And now it throws them all on the desktop for me. So this is how I use it actually most often is I'll take screenshots that I took on my devices. I want to put them into a blog post, but I don't want them to be huge. Again, if I look in Finder, it's 16.4 megabytes for the six files there, down to 1.5, which is a huge difference for page load times. So that's really great, and that's kind of how I use it day to day. But yeah, that is Squash. That's how it works, a quick overview of the functionality. A lot of this is available totally for free, so it really is no risk to you to try it out. Um, link in the description to do that. And if you do want to unlock the pro features, uh, there is a coupon code. The code is Birchtree. You should see it on screen here. And it's also in the uh, description as well. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you to RealMac for sponsoring this video. And I'll see you here next time. Bye-bye.